In this video, I'll show you how to use Excel to find the probability of sampling distributions for means and proportions. So here we have our two formulas. This first one here is used whenever you're looking for the probability of an event that is less than or equal to some value. And this formula here is used whenever we're trying to find the probability of an event that is greater than or equal to some value. So here on the right are the two examples in the lecture. If we look at this example here, this one was for the means. So you, we were given a normal distribution with a mean of 2,000 and a standard deviation of 230. If a random sample size of 8 is selected, calculate the probability that the sample mean will exceed 2,100. That tells me we're interested in greater than 2,100. Now in the lecture, you learned how to convert our sample mean, our x bar, into a z value. So you want to make sure to watch the lecture before you try it in Excel. But to actually use Excel in this one, because it is greater than some value, we'll type in equals 1 minus norm dot s dot dist parentheses, the z value that we solve for using the formula when we plugged in our sample mean. Our z value was 1.23 comma true because we are always looking for the cumulative probabilities when we're working with sampling distributions. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And so we get the probability at 0 0.1093. Now these formulas can be used for either means or proportions. So it's very important that when you are faced with a problem, you make sure you identify, is this a mean or is this a proportion? Use the appropriate formula to convert your data into a Z value and then use Excel. In this other example here, our 10% of U.S. engineers are women, how likely is it that a sample of 200 engineers will contain fewer than five women in these positions? We've stated that we're interested in the probability that our sample proportion is less than or equal to 0 0.025. Again, you have to have gone through the lecture before to know where does that number come from and how do we convert that into a z-value. Once it is converted into a z-value, we can use Excel. So we'll type in equals norm.s.dist parentheses negative 3.54 comma true. Close our parentheses and hit enter. And so the probability that fewer than five women engineers are in our sample of 200 engineers is 0 0.0002. So I offer one more formula up here and it's optional. You don't have to use it. But this is how we could use the standardized formula that we learned about in chapter three and in chapter six for chapter seven, but it only works for the mean. Here's our scenario. A population is known to be normally distributed with a mean of 2000 and a standard deviation of 230. If a random sample size of eight is selected, what is the Z value if the sample mean is 2100? So in other words, you can actually use this formula to get the Z value and then plug it into our formula down here. So to do that, we will type in equals standardize parentheses, our X that we're interested in is that 2100, our mean was given to us at 2000, but then here our standard deviation, be careful, it's the standard deviation of our sample means or the standard error. And we got that by taking our standard deviation in the story, dividing by our square root of n. And so that was the 81.32, and then close your parentheses. So that'll give us a z-score. And if I round this using my decimal mover, my z-score of 1.23. So if you don't want to do it by hand for the z value of a mean, you can use this formula, but you have to remember that the standard deviation that you enter into the formula is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. If you simply plug in the standard deviation from the story without accounting for the sample size, you will get the wrong z value, which in turn will give you the wrong answer for your probability distribution. So if you have any questions, just let me know.